Let's take a look at a projectile motion similar to what Peter Fox was working on in the Foxtrot cartoon. Uh, we have a cannon that's shooting with an initial velocity of 18 meters per second and an angle of 30 degrees above the horizontal. And so the first thing we want to do is draw a sketch. Well, we have the cannon and everything here. And so let's indicate our coordinate system. And so I'm going to make positive y up and positive x to the right. And the origin is where the cannonball is starting. Uh, the cannonball's velocity, v0, is a vector representing the uh, velocity of the cannonball. And it's got a y part and an x part. And we know angle theta here is 30 degrees. And so the y part we call v0y, that's the initial y velocity that is constantly changing. And then we have v0x is the adjacent side, and that remains the same if we ignore air resistance, which we are. And so v0y is the opposite side, and so we're going to use sine. So it's going to be the hypotenuse times sine 30. And so that gives us 9 meters per second. And V0x is the adjacent side, so we'd use cosine. And that's going to give us 15.6 meters per second. So this remains constant. This is going to reduce to 0 and then go negative as the cannonball goes up and then back down. Let's look at the y motion to figure out how long the cannonball is in the air. And we'll start with this equation, which is not a new equation. We used it for constant acceleration. It tells me where the cannonball is at in the y direction at any time t. If I just carefully substitute everything I know about the problem, looking at my coordinate system to make sure I get the signs right, I'll be able to solve any projectile motion problem I'm given. This is my final y position. The cannonball is going to end up on the ground, and so that's zero with my coordinate system. And the cannonball also starts at zero. And we already figured out v0y is 9. Don't forget the t. And then the acceleration is down. And so we have to put negative 9.8 if we made up positive. This gives me 4.9 t squared equals 9t. You can see one solution is t equals zero. We don't want that. That's, we're asking when was the cannonball on the ground? Well, it started on the ground, but we want the next time when it ends up on the ground. And so that turns out to be 1.84 seconds. Now that I know that, I can go to the x motion. It's the same equation as I used in the y, except x is our variable. And I'm not going to bother to write the 1 half at squared. Without air resistance, no x acceleration. And so my initial x was 0. My initial x velocity, 15.6. And the time is the same time we found here. So that's 1.84. And so this projectile has traveled 28.7 meters um, by the time it is back on the ground. With this. Simulation, we can check that. This is another simulation on the PHET website. So if you just search PHET and go to their simulations, you can find the projectile simulation and, and try things on your own. So I'm going to take away our writing here for a second. And let's fire and see if we're right. I've got the scale set up so that this target is placed about 28.7 away. And so here we go. Bullseye, and hopefully by watching this, you'll get a bullseye on the test. Next, we'll take a look at figuring out the maximum height of the projectile in the next video.